And Anna Paulina Luna agrees with that. That's probably an understatement. The Florida Congresswoman, kind enough to join us, House Oversight Committee member as well. Congresswoman, always great to see you. She's gone. She quit. Uh, but you still have a lot of concerns, don't you? Uh, most certainly. You know, when we were talking with her, I, I'm sure you heard a few members actually asked her about encrypted communications with the White House. Initially, she denied them. Then she said that she did use these communications. She also was giving us different timelines. At one point, said that she actually didn't really have timelines to reference. So I think that what this really task force is going to be able to do, Neil, is it's A, going to be able to conduct a side-by-side -side investigation with the FBI, the Secret Service, and other agencies to really figure out how to not have this happen again. And then also, again, I just want to put out there for the American people, look, they actually try to get us to have this hearing without media present, and I think that that's wrong, mainly because, first and foremost, we want to dispel any conspiracy theories and ensure that this doesn't happen again, and the only way to do that is really in front of the American people and getting the information directly to them. Well, there is bipartisan agreement on that something has to be done. I'm just wondering what that next step could be, Congresswoman, because the fact of the matter is it is still under the umbrella of Homeland Security, something born after the 9-11 attacks. And a lot of people say the whole Homeland Security uh, cabinet department has, has become, you know, essentially over-administered. And, and, and it's unwieldy, too big. Uh, what do you make of that? And what, hap what happens now even to Alejandro Mayorkas, who heads it? Yeah, um, well, actually, recently, earlier this week, uh, Mark Green, the chairman of Homeland Security, actually subpoenaed information from Mayorkas. And so, to my knowledge, he's actually been in talks with him over the phone. But I think ultimately what's going to happen is within the next couple of months, uh, you know, the in initial security director wanted to give us a 60-day report. That's unacceptable. They need to conduct this immediately, convene, be in session, figure out what happened. And then ultimately, I would say that any person that was in charge of deciding whether or not President Trump should have taken the stage while, while knowing that there was a threat out there. Um, they need to be fired. I think in general what needs to happen is from here on out there needs to be a set number of Secret Service delegated to uh, per, uh, VIPs, whether it is presidential candidates or members of Congress that are under threat. But I think that you are seeing a big bipartisan push and support for this because as I told the director, we are sitting ducks and in her showing the vulnerabilities that existed because of her lack of competency and leadership, now, really, the world knows how vulnerable we are, and that's a dangerous place to be, especially in an election cycle. And so I'm looking forward to the results and findings of that committee and also changes. Uh, people need to be fired, but also, too, this can never happen again. It was egregious. It was disgusting. And I'm glad that she resigned. And it was scary, to your point. Uh, it, you know, a lot of people are thinking, oh, we've got to change the way we do rallies, indoors or outdoors. But the fact is, we're in the throes of the campaign season, as you alluded at the top, Congresswoman. Um, and, and, you know, rallies are resuming, and now uh, with Kamala Harris as the Democratic presidential candidate. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that these rallies can go forward, that the Secret Service is going to be more on top of things as it looks for a new chief and all of that? I think that Secret Service is absolutely going to be under a microscope, and so they are doing everything that they can to ensure that these rallies will stay safe. And I don't think that President Trump should have to change what he's been doing. I think that Secret Service needs to do their job, and I think they're going to. Um, what I will say, though, Neil, is on my investigating, and something that I brought up yesterday in the oversight discussion with the former director of Secret Service, is, look, uh, they were working with local law enforcement, and law enforcement said that Secret Service was not attending the briefings with the snipers, and also that some of these areas, because they were technically outside of the perimeter, that Secret Service was unbothered with them. And so what I will say is that Secret Service's job doesn't stop at the perimeter. It starts and ends with the protection of the VIP, whether it is President Trump, whether it is Kamala Harris, whether it's Nancy Pelosi or Speaker Johnson. And so what I will say is that can never happen again, and it's not going to. And I'm looking forward very much so to see who is working with the shooter. All right. And you're not the only one, uh, but you did lead that charge. Congressman, always great seeing you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. God bless.